Howdy howdy, in today's video I'm going to be doing some sand casting. I'll show you how I turn a 3D print into solid silver. Let's get straight into it. This is the subject for today. This is a computer generated image that I made in ChatGBT. It's a boxer and as you can see it's kind of like almost carved out of marble and he's got some a bit of damage so he looks like he's been well beaten up. We're going to call this one the journey. So this is the, as I say, this is the image we're going to use. So the first job now is to get this transferred across into a depth map. And as you can see here, that's been done. And this just basically makes it into a grayscale image. And this is just so now we can then put this into an STL generator. And all what that does, it just makes it into a 3D model, which we can then print out on the 3D printer. What we'll do now, I'll show you the actual 3D model that I generated from this depth map. So here we are, and look at this bad boy. This is a 3D image of it, as you were. And look at that, a nice, nice big relief. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed, this is gonna come out really cool. Really happy with the process and how it's gone. So what we'll do now, we'll get it chucked across to the printer and get it printed out so we can do some sand casting. So here we are. We've now transferred that STL file over to Cura. Now this is a program just that, that gets it prepared for the printer. And basically all it does, it slices it up into layers so the printer can then go across and print each layer. So what I like to do here is you can see, I like to stand it up on its edge and print it on its edge. Because I'll just find that I'll get a lot finer print and a better detailed print if I do it that way. So I've just got to look at the size. I'm not going to have to resize it because I've already got that done in Blender. It's a 50mm round. So it's nice, nice wide. It's going to be a nice chunky pour. So what we'll do now, we'll slice it up and the computer is going to calculate all the layers now so that's what it's doing just just working out how the the print head's going to print it out layer by layer so there you go just over the two hours to print it out but it's, it's that's to be expected it's a big chunky print and this is how it's going to do it as you can see the the, the red area is the actual coin or the round and the little blue bits on the front of the supports just to help it hold up certain areas when it's printing so it doesn't all flop down so as, as you can see here it's holding up his chin and holding up the the one boxing glove and there, here's the nozzle this is how it's actually going to look when it's printing as you can see there it's doing a layer and all it does it goes backwards and forwards until it all layers up and gets all the way to the top of the coin so let's get it printed out and get it in the sand Right, so here we are. Here's a 3D print. Look at that bad boy. Just so pleased how it come out. Good definition, some good details. You can see all the cracks in the marble, as it were. So what we'll do now, first job as always, we'll get some powder on. And I'm still using the old, uh, what's it, what do you call it? Corn flour. Yeah, still on the corn flour because I've got no talc, but it does the job. Now we're just very finely putting some on, rubbing a lot of it off to the eye, but it is still there. And what this does is just stops the sand, the casting sand from sticking from it so we can get a nice crisp impression. And if we get a nice crisp impression, we get a good pour at the end of it. So really important job this. And the second important part at the beginning is to actually sieve the casting sand on top. Now this just ensures that we get nice fine grains. As you can see there, look how tiny the sand is. They're just nice and fine. And again, this aids us, gets a good, good first impression. So what I'll do now is just, just finely sieve some on and then we'll start lamping it in and get on with the uh, impression
Right, now as you can see at this stage, I've got quite a bit in there now. So what I like to do now is just really pack it down. So what I do is I just lamp it up. I, I put like almost like it's domed, domed a bit. And then I go and get my rubber mallet and we give it a damn good banging. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll give it a bit of a bang with the mallet. So there we go. It was a bit of a quickie. And now what all we need to do now is just scrape off the excess and get it nice and flat and then that way we can get a nice nice and flat on the bottom so it sits nice and then we'll just whip out the 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 3d print and hopefully we've got a good impression we can pour in So here we are, this is where it, where, yeah, you, where you see if your work's done any good. So we've just got the tape here, I haven't done the pump screw on this one, I just I thought we'd use the masking tape. So there we go, let's see, open sesame, what have we got? Oh, look at that bad boy! There you go, so it's come out really cool. So what we'll do now, we'll fire the furnace up and we'll get this bad boy poured. Right guys, just before we crack on with the pour, I have had a few people asking me in the comments and, and privately as well, DMing me, whether I actually sell any of my pours, and I actually do. Uh, you'll see my website here, so you just scrolling through, that's a nice little school, school bar I've got on. I do sell them, so if you are interested, just uh, check out the website, www.silverpunk.org. Well worth a look if you're interested. Now, let's get on to the serious stuff, the pour.
what a bad boy of a quench that was it looks so cool but there you go here it is roar out the the water as it were straight just how it was poured so let's get it inside now do a bit of clean up do some toning and reveal the the final product and while i'm doing this i'll check out some of the cool channels i watch All right, so this is the Icon of Inspiration number nine in the series and uh, has a limited mintage of just 10,000 worldwide. Uh, there is 100 silver proof edition, uh, 100 silver proof, 100 uh, gold, and then there's 10, just 10 uh, proof, gold and silver, and signed by the artist himself, Joel Itzkowicz. Um I'm sorry, I always pronounce his name wrong, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Sorry, buddy. Um, anyway, so here on the reverse, we have $2 denomination, 2024. And you can see the muse there um, as is standing. We have um, written here, uh, 395 silver, one ounce, which is really cool. And uh, there, of course, we have the uh, New East uh, Shield. Um, and... Uh, Again, it shows up as $2. As we flip it on the side, we can see a really nice, clear, uh, readed edge. Something I like. It's a really thin capsule as well. That's also really cool. And uh, this, of course, is the Man of the Hour by uh, New Zealand Mint here as well. It's a William Shakespeare. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, very famous, of course, for... A number of things, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth, just to name a few. Um, and uh, he was one of the great, you know, poets. For this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is a troy ounce? Where did it come from? How did we get here? Why do we buy our silver? in ounces why don't we say we're going to purchase 31 grams of silver as opposed to just one ounce one troy ounce we're going to take a look at that in today's video we use the metric system here in the uk and the system to some extent that was used even today is called the avoir de poids system and the name comes from an anglo-norman french meaning goods of weight and it's based on pounds and ounces that that were 16 ounces to a pound and then it mentions about in medieval times when traders were bartering, all precious metals were weighed using the troy ounce system and not the avoir de poids system. And the troy system uses pounds and ounces, so avoir de poids ounce equaling 28.35 grams, whereas a troy ounce weighs 31.10 grams. And this means that one troy ounce is equivalent to approximately 1.097 avoir de poids ounces. And we still use the troy ounce today, especially when weighing precious metals. And in simple terms, the avoir de poids ounces are just going to be standard ounces. So you have a troy ounce and you have a standard ounce. And the troy ounce is going to be around about 10% heavier. And the name dates back to a French town, a French town named Troyes or Troy. Excuse my French, please correct me if I'm wrong. And it was an important trade centre that standardised it. And looking on Bullion by Post as well, it's been the official way to... If you've enjoyed this bad boy of a pour, check all these out up here. I'm sure you'll enjoy them.